Good morning, 4Bs. You might uh, recognize the background a little bit. Um, you can see here is your classroom of 4B uh, fame. Uh, 150, here it is, 150. Um, and we're going to do uh, the next uh, chapter in um, the uh, Lower the Trap. Here we go. Uh, Crusher Claw, Georgia, looked up and down the freezer aisle before answering Graham underneath her breath. My dad insisted that I go with him to see Norris's dad at the cannery yesterday when we placed our order for the lobster festival. What's that? Norris had been stealing from my lunches. Uh, my dad wanted to have a word with his dad. Jeez Louise, said Graham, trying hard to cover up his eagerness at having discovered her possible motive for possible motive uh, for getting Norris into trouble. So let's go back there. Jeez Louise, said Jer Graham, trying hard to cover up his eagerness at having discovered her possible motive for getting Norris into trouble with the cactus. How did, you, how did it go with Norris's dad when you went to see him? He said he talked to Norris, says Georgia, but Norris still took a swipe at my slice of banana cream pie today. That Norris, said Graham, and then as casually as he could muster, he added, by the way, what time did you go to the cannery yesterday? I don't know, said Georgia, shrugging. I came here after school and then we headed to the cannery. Graham frowned. There was no way, Georgia could have been involved in the cactus theft. She had been busy working at the tasty food during the time that Norris thought the plant had disappeared. Are you okay, said Georgia. Sure, said Graham, quickly switching gears. I'm here to buy some cheddar. Ch cheddar. American cheddar, Canadian cheddar, old cheddar, medium cheddar, or mild. What for, Dad's casserole? Come on, come with me. Georgia led him down to the dairy aisle and scooped up a brick of cheese from the refrigerated bin as, as deftly as Graham's dad could, could scoop as deaf, deaf -tily, as deftly. No idea what that word means. As Graham's dad could scoop lobsters out of traps. Try this one instead of cheddar, said Georgia. It ha will have a nice zing to it. Thanks, said Graham, already thinking about the next suspect on Norris's list. Deep in thought, Graham returned home. Then, during supper, it occurred to him that he might not solve the cactus mystery in time. He could barely enjoy his helping of casserole as he wrestled with that unsettled possibility. The next day, a crowd of visitors watched transfixed as Graham dropped bait into the mega lobster tank for its weekend feeding. By now, the crustacean had become a bit of a celebrity. Graham enjoyed answering questions as it gobbled down its dinner. See how its left claw is bigger than its right one, explained Graham. Lobsters start out with the same claws, but like people, they figure out which claw they'd like to use better. That claw became, becomes the larger crusher claw. The, one, the other one is used for tearing. The lobster, this lobster's left-handed. Mrs. Carrington poked her way through the crowd. Graham, I have something to show you when you're done. Graham pressed the lid back on the ice cream bucket, then excused himself from the onlookers. What's up, he said. She led him into her office and pointed to a yellow newspaper, a yellowed, sorry, a yellowed newspaper article that, you know, has been in the sun. So newspaper articles will turn a little bit yellow if they're in the sun. So she pointed out a yellow newspaper article, a yellowed newspaper article that was taped into a dusty scrapbook on her desk. The caption read, Giant Lobster Captured. The year was 1977. 
Graham peered at the grainy black and white photo in the article. A fisherman was crouched on the wharf beside a mammoth lobster. It, it must have been at the end of the day because lobster boats were tied up along, along both sides of the wharf. Graham recognized the oak crop of rocks at the mouth of the harbor. That's our government wharf, he explained. Very observant, said Mrs. Carrington. The fisherman's name was McDermott. He passed away last year, I think, Graham quickly read the article. It doesn't say what happened to the lobster, Graham said. No, it doesn't, but I don't think it ended up as a trophy. The McDermott family donated number uh, donated a number of interesting items to the museum, like this scrapbook, for instance, but a giant mounted lobster wasn't one of them. Graham glanced through the office door and across the museum to the lobster tank. Then he returned to the photograph of McDermott and his giant lobster. Graham grasped the lobster on the wharf was left-handed, just like the one his dad had caught. Mrs. Carrington, what if McDermott returned the lobster to the sea? Do you think it's possible that my dad caught the same lobster again, only years later? No one knows how old a lobster can get. Mrs. Carrington said thoughtfully, thoughtfully, Your dad's lobster certainly weighs more than McDermott's, and every time a lobster sheds, it gets bigger and bigger, sort of like the one that we have home in our tank. It gets bigger and bigger, and usually after we feed it like feeder fish. So it'll eat two feeder fish, and then it'll get bigger, and then it, boom, it sheds its skin. If it, if, if it isn't trapped, said Graham, his voice trailing off. Well, the only way to know if it is for sure is to find out what happened to McDermott's lobster. McDermott spent la his last years at Sunset Manor. He might have made friends there, and who know? Graham grabbed the magnifying glass on Mrs. Carrington's desk. He could, he could make out the names of the two of the oldest lobster boats on the wharf, Crack of Dawn and Fog Burner. Crack of Dawn? The crack of dawn, when the fishermen go out, they go about 4 o'clock in the morning. And fog burner, okay? And when the fog burns off, it's because of the sun. Graham read from the Stearns out loud. Maybe the owner of these two boats ended up with McDermott at the senior's residence. How clever, Graham, said Mrs. Carrington. Let me make a photocopy of the article for you. When she left her office, Graham wandered back to the tank. The giant lobster returned Graham's stare with its black, beady eyes. It would be incredible if, incredible if this was McDermott's lobster, a real scientific link to the past. But, Graham next, but Graham's next question was troubling. Would selling the lobster beat to the highest bidder be the right thing to do? Maybe Graham realized it should be set free. But if it was, then Graham's trip to the big fish uh, would definitely be out of the picture. Here we go, said Mrs. Carrington, handing him a copy. Graham carefully folded the copy and tucked it in his pocket, along with Norris's list of suspects. When do you think you'll visit Sunset Manor? Asked Mrs. Carrington to chat with some of the residents there. Soon, said Graham. Yet even as he said the word, he was not so sure that he wanted to learn the truth. Wow, that's the end of the chapter. And it is Wednesday, Word Work Wednesday. You guys have been preempted or posted there uh, with some uh, words um, and so forth. So there you go. Uh, fun activity. Look for the words in the book and uh, and you're good to go. Um, what else are we doing today? We're uh, handing out some uh, things for tomorrow. Uh, these are your, um, what do you call it, your um, learning packages uh, for, you know, some kids in the class. So yeah, uh, do the great work. Uh, we're working on report cards now. So um, you know, your mark will only go up. So there you go. Isn't that the great news? Um, no one in the class is going down. So you guys have done a great job. So pat yourselves on the back and, uh, everything else. So a uh, great day today, Wednesday, uh, May 27th. Wow. So yeah, we'll be, uh, swimming in the sea this time next month. Hopefully maybe swimming in the sea. Some of you. All right, well, take care, and uh, see you soon. Do you like the music? Play a little bit for you before we go. Here we go. Sound is terrible. I put in a, re put in a request to get some uh, better sound in here. All right, you guys take care. See you soon. Be safe.